winter solstice is approaching, and as daylight becomes more and more precious, I can't help but step outside and reflect on what the sun has created in a year. Here at dawn, the sun's low angle spotlights each plant, showing off the rich colors of senescing foliage, the sculptural forms of drying flowers, and the filigree texture of grasses and goldenrods going to seed. This is a construction site, and soon this vegetation, which emerged naturally, will be removed and replaced with a house and a lawn stretching from one corner of the property to the other. And that makes some sense. On a property the size of grassland, like a turf grass lawn, will maintain visibility between the house and the street and be straightforward to maintain. But there are other types of grasslands besides turf grass that we can grow that can reduce maintenance demands, support biodiversity, and provide a lot of seasonal interest. And these other types of grasslands don't have to replace lawns entirely. They can replace lawn areas that aren't being used and are being maintained unnecessarily. I've been watching this grassland develop since this soil was dumped here a little over a year ago. And vegetation like this is a big source of inspiration and education for me as a landscape architect. This grassland emerged from a seed bank that's been lying dormant in the soil. The plants here have been growing during an extreme drought. No one's irrigating. A turf grass lawn would have long been dead by now. And this isn't the original topography of this site. The soil has been piled up here and so compacted by heavy machinery that you can barely get a shovel into it. Compacted soil with low fertility and irrigated only by rainfall is a condition somewhere on every one of my design projects. This isn't a great condition for turf grass lawns, but it's perfectly fine for other types of grasslands with plants adapted to exploit these conditions. When creating a design planting using spontaneous vegetation like this as a model, the first thing to do is understand what I'm seeing. I start by documenting the ratio of grasses to forbs to woody plants. This grassland is dominated by grasses, of course, and I'm seeing in any one square foot about three individual grass species to one forb. I also take note of any changes in species composition, like the occasional patch of sedges that have found moisture. Along plugs of dominant grass and forb species, I'll take the cue from these sedges and include moisture-loving plants in a seed mix that'll germinate in microclimates that escape my attention. I also look at how species are fulfilling specific structural roles, like ruderal or annual species that fill open spaces quickly, or longer-lived grass species that provide support for rambly forbs. This helps me create a plant list that provides selections for ground cover, understory, and canopy layers of the grassland. Then I work to identify individual species, especially those species that dominate. Many of the plants I'm finding aren't available to me in the trade, especially in the quantities I'd need to crowd out weeds. So when selecting species, I try and at least stick to the genera I'm finding. For example, I may not have the specific goldenrods I'm seeing available to me, but I may be able to find other species of goldenrod in the trade that can simulate both the functional and aesthetic roles these goldenrods are providing. Lastly, I observe the distribution patterns of species across the field and try and organize these patterns into broad, legible shapes like blocks, drifts, and scatters. The thought of this grassland being scraped off and turned into lawn feels like a missed opportunity. Not only is it replacing a very low maintenance planting with the highest maintenance planting, but because of the slope and shade in the back of the property, it's replacing a stable condition with a potentially unstable one. Perhaps more importantly, it's a missed opportunity to have a place on the property to experience the rhythms of nature that biodiverse plantings have, and the birds and fluttering insects that they invite, and the capacity of all these things to positively impact our health. For me, this garden, rich with form, texture, color, and diversity, draws out emotions in me, and I'm reminded of the power of vegetation design to not only build ecological richness in a place, but also the healing work of landscapes to stir feelings and memories. And with any luck, allow the beauty of nature at home to create a teary eye and a smile or two.